The speed of light and vacuum is one of the fundamental constants of the universe. Most waves travel with different speed depending on their frequency, the phenomenon known as dispersion. Not so with light. Light of all frequencies travels with the same speed. In physics, this is called a dispersionless wave. But even the speed of light can be altered. Light travels slower in a denser medium, such as glass. Most geometrical objects, such as lenses, are based on this effect. The intense gravitational field of a black hole also slows down the light. Light has many interesting properties. In addition to the geometrical or ray optics and the general relativity effects, there are also wave optics, which includes diffraction, interference, and other effects which go beyond the scope of geometrical optics. Most of these effects we can observe only indirectly. We see light focuses by a lens, but we cannot observe the rays inside the lens. We cannot see the light wave itself, and of course, we cannot go anywhere near a black hole. But we can model the behavior of the light using another wave which shares the same key property, no dispersion. In a shallow wave, the amplitude of the wave is close to the depth of the water. The speed of such wave is determined by the density of the water and the depth. It does not depend on the frequency of the wave. To experiment with shallow water waves, we need to build a large shallow aquarium. This one is built out of plexiglass. To make the waves easier to see, we painted the bottom white. To generate the wave, we need an emitter which moves up and down or back and forth and creates the wave. The main part of the emitter is a speaker which converts electrical pulses to vibrational movement. These vibrations are then transported through the lever or rod uh, th to the part of the emitter which hits the water. A long narrow emitter creates a flat wave, while a small circular emitter creates a circular wave, like a point source. The emitter is driven by a variable frequency pulse generator. The pulse generator itself does not have enough power to drive the speaker, so we use a high current transistor together with a 12 volt battery to amplify each pulse. The output of the amplifier is about 5 watts. The pulse generator also drives an LED which flashes synchronously with the wave. This makes the wave easier to see because in the light of the flashes the wave appears frozen. This is called the stroboscope effect. To keep the waves from reflecting off the walls, we pad the walls with soft, irregularly shaped foam. The simplest geometrical optical effect that we can demonstrate is a shadow. Here we set up a barrier to block part of the wave front. Behind the barrier there is a shadow which means no waves. Let's see what happens when we change the frequency of the waves. Now the shadow is not perfect. The waves bends around the corner and there are some waves in the shadow region. This op optical effect is called diffraction. Diffraction shows the limitations of geometrical optics. Just as with light, diffraction gets stronger at longer wavelengths or lower frequencies. What happens to the waves which hit the barrier? It does not just disappear, but it gets reflected. The barrier is actually a mirror. To see this, we reflect the wave at an angle into the shadow region where it is easier to see. At lower frequencies, we can see the diffraction as well. 
Mirrors and lenses are the main elements of geometrical optics. Lenses work because the speed of light is slower in a dense medium. The light rays bend at the border of air and glass. This is called refraction, and we can demonstrate it by creating a region of deeper water and a region of shallower water. The wave is slower in the shallow water, just as light is slower in the dense glass. To see refraction, the waveform must arrive to different points along the border at different times so we can see that the wave travels slower after crossing the border. To make the effect more pronounced, we want to have a large difference of depth, which is equivalent to a high refraction coefficient for light. To recreate a lens with shallow water waves, we create lens-shaped pieces of plexiglass, which we use to reduce the water depth. To create the lens-shaped shallow area, we submerge these pieces of plexiglass into the aquarium. We see how the lens focuses the waves at some distance behind it. The point where all the waves converge is called the focus point. Let us now go beyond the geometrical optics. But first, let us demonstrate the Huygens principle. Each point on the wave front acts as a point source and emits a circular wave. To show this, we select a small portion of the wave front using a narrow slit. On the other side of the slit, we see a circular wave. On the other side of the slit, we see a circular wave. In this experiment, we have not one, but two slits. The waves emitted by the slits create a complex interference pattern. In some places, the two waves cancel each other out, and in the other places, they amplify each other. The strongest amplification happens in the line between the two slits, where the wave run from both slits uh, hit each other at the same time. There are other lines of constructive interference where two different fronts amplify each other but the amplification is not as strong. Between the lines of amplification, there are areas of destructive interference where the waves from the other slits cancel each other. But how can we prove that the interference pattern from two point sources really looks like this? This wave emitter has two small tips which act as point wave sources. The wave pattern is very similar to the one we just observed. The same interference pattern can be observed when light passes through a double slit. Nothing travels faster than light, but even the light cannot escape the pull of a black hole. Of course, it would be dangerous to bring a real black hole into the lab, but we can observe one using our shallow water waves. In 1980, Professor William Unruh of the University of British Columbia discovered that very similar equations describe the light near a black hole and water waves in rapidly flowing water, in particular a water near rainfall or water flowing over the edge. The subject attracted other physicists to continue the research. In a nutshell, the idea is that if the water flows away faster than the wave can travel, the wave is carried with the flow and cannot escape. To recreate a black hole, we need to let the water drain out of the aquarium. The easiest way is to just drill a hole in the bottom. Of course, the aquarium will empty out pretty quickly unless we return the water back. To do this, we need a pump and a series of pipes. There is also a valve to control the flow of water. The water flows through the pipes to the pump and back into the aquarium. When the water enters the aquarium, it can splash and create unwanted waves. To prevent that, 
we spread the flow of water across the entire width of the aquarium using this barrier. The foam dampens the remaining waves. To see stronger waves near the black hole, we use this longer emitter which we can move closer to the drain. The water flows faster as it gets closer to the hole, just as the escape velocity increases near a real black hole. We have to make the water shallow enough so the waves don't travel too fast, but near the rim, the water flows fast enough to create the event horizon from which the waves cannot escape. Notice how the wavelength is shorter near the black hole. Light falling into a black hole also has a shorter wavelength, which is known as blue shift. The waves which pass close to the event horizon can escape the pull of a black hole and as they travel, their wavelength increases. This is the redshift. The same happens to light near a real black hole. The waves which do not come too close to the event horizon escape their black hole, but not before its pull bends them from their original path. Here we see the wave runs from both sides of the hole bending around it. Recall that the rays of light are the perpendiculars to the wave fronts. The black hole bends the rays like a lens. Here we have a point source, like a star, near a black hole. An observer far away from the hole will only see the rays from the star, but the observer behind the black hole sees the rays coming at him from two directions. He concludes that there are two stars on both sides of the real one. This Gravitational lensing for light waves was observed by astronomers. It can be caused by black holes or other very massive space objects such as galaxies. If we are very lucky, we may get to see the super radiance, the waves emitted by the rotating of a black hole. Professor Zeldovich of the Soviet Union first predicted this effect for an actual black hole. Then Professor Berti from Washington University in St. Louis determined that the same type of radiation can be generated by a rotating vortex in the water. The shallow water waves experiment allowed us to simulate many properties of light and observe optical effects. We saw the basics of geometrical optics, the wave optic effects, and we even get to travel to the event horizon of a black hole.